Alright, Season of the Haunted started about a week ago at this point, so I figured it'd be a good time to give my kind of first impressions of the season and how I'm feeling at this point. Obviously this video won't be super edited, more so just some quick thoughts. I feel very mixed on Season of the Haunted. It's kind of weird for me because there are some things that I really like and there are other things that I just really don't like. Now, full disclosure, it's only been a week of the season, so my opinion could completely change next week when Iron Banner comes back or upon future quests or sever missions. But alright, the main thing I really don't like too much is honestly I'm not super fond of the whole Nightmare storyline. I find Nightmares to be kind of strange, and honestly I think Nightmares are part of the reason why Shadowkeep wasn't very well received. It's just not a concept I find very interesting, if I'm being honest with you. The Nightmares being tied to the darkness is cool, and that's interesting, but I don't know, I just find the Nightmares themselves and some of Eris Morn's involvement to be, I don't know, just not that exciting. When it really should be. I I mean, we're dealing with the darkness at this point, we're knees deep in this storyline, and I don't hate nightmares as a concept, maybe it's just that I don't find the activities they're a part of to be that interesting. The return of Callus is definitely very cool. I think Callus is a really interesting character, and I like that he seems to be kind of like a disciple of the Witness at this point. I realized this morning that I don't know if Bungie clarified this, but now that the Leviathan is back, is it possible that a version of the Leviathan is the new raid we're getting next season? Or did Bungie specifically say that it would be a Destiny 1 raid, because if they didn't say that it would be a Destiny 1 reprised raid, I think we're getting Leviathan back next season, which is cool. I prefer King's Fall, but it is still really cool, and I'm sure it'd be an interesting take on the raid. I think the stuff with Crow is neat, but I really am ready for this whole Aldrin Sov storyline to be over, just because, you know, I want to see Crow kind of mature into his own character and not be held down by Aldrin Sov and Forsaken, and I get that that's the point of the story right now, but it's kind of hard to like Crow crow right now not because of aldrin but just because of the things he does like obviously we had that whole thing last season with the scion and this season he's really really struggling and i expect him to get over it but you know i want to see crow in action i want to fight side by side with crow like it'd be really cool to me if he was just like your partner in crime like you know he pops up from time to time to help you out in missions not just kind of always emotional baggage but you know i'm sure that'll all get figured out in time the stuff with zavala and his wife is quite interesting and the stuff with Keitel is really interesting we'll talk about the dungeon in a second but overall just the narrative it's decent enough i'm just gonna wait and see where it goes to judge it any further so far i'm not too fond of it but these things change a lot over the course of a season so i'll give it some time we also of course need to talk about solar 3.0 and i have some thoughts on solar 3.0 that i'm not sure people are going to agree with it seems like people are really split on whether they like solar 3.0 or not some people think it's great some people think it's just not that good now i mainly play titan and i've had minimal playtime on the Hunter and Warlock over the last week, but I will say I like Solar 3.0. I think it's an upgrade for the most part over Solar 2.0, but I don't think it's as good as Void 3.0, and I think it's a little bit restrictive, which is weird because it's meant to be more customizable, but something about it just feels more limiting. I do think all the new melee abilities are great. The new Hunter grenade is really, really cool. The snap on the Warlock is probably my favorite thing in Solar 3.0, and Hammer of Soul feels really good to me, at least in my experience. <coughs> Go watch How Not Solo Prophecy Part 2. <laughs> so overall with Solar 3.0, I'd say that it is an improvement for the most part. A little restrictive, not as good as Void 3.0, but then again, Void 3.0 is like the mindless subclass, you know? If you don't really know what you want to be doing, if you just want to go out and kill stuff or be effective in any way, just rock Void 3.0 and you'll be fine. Like now, if my girlfriend doesn't know what subclass to use, I'll just tell her to use Void, because it's kind of hard to not use Void 3.0 effectively. Solar 3.0 is a different story, it's a little bit harder to master, which is cool if that's what Bungie is going for, which I think it is, but it's definitely different and I don't think it's as easy to use as Void 3.0, which again, I think is fine. Now I'm certainly curious to see what they do with Arc 3.0, I'm really looking forward to Arc 3.0 and I hope it's good. Has this lowered my expectations for Arc 3.0? 3.0, yeah, a little bit. I'm not expecting it to be as brutally powerful as Void 3.0 now, but it is also worth keeping in mind that how viable a subclass is kind of does depend on the season nowadays. Like, Void was probably its most powerful in Witch Queens. Solar is 
probably the most powerful it's ever going to be right now. So closing thoughts on solar, I think it's good. Not great, but good. Let me know what you think down below. Now the derelict Leviathan is something I really want to talk about because I was not expecting the Leviathan to come back as a fully patrollable space, and I think that's really cool. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the first time we've gotten a new patrol space in a season and not a DLC drop. Obviously the Leviathan isn't as fully developed of a patrol space as, say, the Throne World. It's much smaller, but still, it's cool to have another place to explore. So I think the Leviathan coming back is really, really cool. I was always very fond of the Leviathan. However, I'm already a little tired of doing the Nightmare Containment events. The Opulent Chests are awesome, and I really like going to find those, but the actual Nightmare Containment event itself, honestly, I, I already don't feel like doing them. It's just kind of a hassle. Again, exploring the Leviathan, really cool, glad it's back. The Opulent Chests are awesome. The enemy density has been really, really good, but just the Nightmare Containment event and the general, I would say, lack of events and activities to do there, it's a little underwhelming, but I can't complain about it too much because at the end of the day, we did get a new patrol space, which is pretty cool. The weapons are all really cool. I don't know how good they all are, but they look amazing. The menagerie weapons being back is awesome. I honestly think this is the coolest looking round of seasonal weapons we've ever gotten. Dungeon weapons included. I don't know if you want to include those here, but the dungeon weapons look incredible. They really are quite unique. Now, the seasonal armor, on the other hand, is a bit of a mixed bag for me. The season pass armor is definitely cool, and I'm definitely going to be grinding to get it. Don't think it's going to fit very well with other armor. It's a little weird, too, because it has kind of a Halloween vibe going, and it's June. The Crown of Sorrow armor, or the, the seasonal world drop armor, if you want to call it that, it's cool. I mean, I like it. It's vendor armor. I mean, what do you expect? The dungeon armor, on the other hand, ooh, it's not very good. It just isn't. And if you look at the past dungeons and their armor sets, I understand that they usually don't really have any sort of tie-in to the dungeon. You know, with Prophecy, you have the Dido Moonfang set. With Grasp of Avarice, you have the Echo set, the Descendant Echo set, which doesn't really have anything to do with Grasp of Avarice. So I don't mind if the armor doesn't have to do with the dungeon, but it, it feels a little strange that we're infiltrating Kallus's mind and getting Hake armor that really just just kind of looks like like legendary gear you'd find anywhere else. It just doesn't look that special. And I'm a Titan and I think the Titans look the coolest. I don't have a problem with Hake armor. It just looks so basic for what we're doing. I don't know. I'm not a fan of it. It's not the worst armor we've ever seen, but boy, it's far from the best. I can't comment on the new exotic sword because I haven't gotten it yet, but it looks cool. It looks very cool. And having a new exotic tied to the dungeon is always a win in my opinion. And the dungeon itself is really, really fun. I ran it last night with a couple guys from our Discord, link in the description. And honestly, I think it's possibly Bungie's best dungeon. It's really, really good. It feels more like a raid layer than a dungeon. I just wish the armor looked a bit cooler. All in all, you know, I think the season does feel a little weird. I think it's off to a bit of a strange start, but definitely not all bad. And it has a lot to like about it. Like I mentioned in the power level and champion video, I think the seasonal grind is again starting to show its age. You know, I'm not exactly thrilled to be grinding for 10 extra power levels every season or the master level dungeon it seems like again the main difference is champions and a higher power level which you know you've come to expect from destiny but i would like to see steps to change that a bit in the future make it a little more interesting but anyway those are my first impressions of the season i'm really looking forward to iron banner and rift coming back oh the new crucible map is awesome i really really like it forgot to mention that but yeah weird start i think it'll end up being a decent season but what do you think be sure to let me know in the comments below and i'll be sure to feature some of your thoughts in a future video. If you watched or made it to the end, I truly appreciate that. Thanks so much for hanging out and goodbye.